with Brian Lee. Brian, welcome. Uh, Glad to have you. Glad to be here, brother. All right. Before I get started. Uh, Brian, how did you get started in the wrestling business? Uh, how did I get started? I guess just like everybody else, I went to a wrestling school. Uh, I went to a wrestling school in Orlando and then uh, through Tampa, to the dungeon in Tampa, and then uh, Rocky Montana, Jack and Jerry Briscoe, uh, mostly up through the Florida crew, just like that, you know. And uh, I went through a, you want me to look at the camera? Don't point at me like that ever again. Uh, <laughs> um, um, I went through about nine or ten months in a wrestling school with uh, Ron and Don Harris, you know, Ron and Don Harris, and uh, they were there before me, and uh, we all graduated together, and uh, moved to Tennessee in 1987. So, so you were you were, you were a wrestling fan growing up? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I grew up with Florida Championship Wrestling, Florida, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Did you go to that house shows and stuff, or did you just watch it on uh, TV? I saw the Eddie Graham Sports Stadium and uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville Coliseum. Uh, on Thursday nights, Jacksonville Coliseum. Uh, I grew up in Jacksonville a little bit. Uh, about eight, nine years I was in Jacksonville, and then mostly um, in Orlando. So I was with Eddie Grant Sports Stadium. Hey, uh, here, here, I mean, you can edit this too, right? I mean, yeah. but what about uh, sit over here close to do so I can look at you and the fucking camera because he's got, I mean, he's got the camera over here. Okay, how's that? Right that's there, that's good, brother. But I always feel like I'm talking to you. you know well, you're talking to me, right? Right. Um, well, you said the Briscoes trained you. Oh, uh, well, uh, off and on. I mean, some guys that trained Briscoes, actually, uh, I forgot the dude's name. I can't remember. You know, they were like um, some extras, and uh, they would, the Briscoes trained them, but uh, we were all affiliated together in the Florida area. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they were your mentors, you would say? Or you trained, yeah, they, they, they were the main? I, I would say um, uh, my, my mentor, actually, um, I didn't have just a certain one, but uh, I tried to pattern myself after Barry Wyndham. You know, Barry Wyndham and uh, that type of style wrestling. Okay. And, uh, um, what was the training like? Um, old school, 1986, <laughs> 1985, when they beat the hell out of you. Okay. And uh, if you come back, they beat the hell out of you again. And the, and the beatings become less, and then they start to uh, mold you into a worker. I mean, that's basically, wouldn't you say, well? <laughs> so while, while, they, while they were beating you, did you ever want to quit? Um... I never wanted to quit the wrestling business uh, because I didn't know it was a business. You know, I just thought uh, when you become, when you start into wrestling, I mean, you don't know about the business side of it. You just want to be a professional wrestler. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, you got to love something before you can become a professional and get paid for it. You know, and I, mm -hmm. I mean, the love for it, I mean, I knew that's what I wanted to do. It was uh, whatever I had to do to do it. You know? Your first match. Very first match. Yeah. Um, TV match or uh, just house show? Very first, first match. First, I was, remember uh, that first match when you got in the ring. Very first match was in uh, Apopka, Florida. No, Sanford, Florida. Apopka was my second match. Um, I was tagging with Don Harris, and um, Ron Harris was videotaping it, and um, Ox Baker was running the show in Sanford, Florida. And uh, I can't remember the guys we uh, wrestled, but um, as we were wrestling, the ring broke. All the poles fell in, so we turned it into like a battle <laughs> rock. You know? Really? Yeah. Uh, so you were with the Harris Brothers from the beginning? From day one. From day one? From day one, yeah. Uh, what was your first territory you went to? Was it, what was territory it like? was uh, USWA. Uh, I got hired on a Saturday morning by Jerry Lawler because he had my picture and somebody else's name messed up. He called me and told me to be on Channel 2 and the same, was it Channel 2 or 5 in Memphis? Channel 5. Channel 5, yeah. Channel 5, Dave Brown and, you know, um, Jerry Lawler. Uh, but the same day, Scott Steiner, Cactus Jack, and myself started at Channel 5. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Mark Calloway, the undertaker, came uh, maybe three weeks later. So. Um, what, was your, what was your first impressions of Jerry Jarrett? Jerry Jarrett? Um, it was just a name for a while. You know, just his name... Uh, uh, a businessman, the owner of the company, um, shot caller, I guess, mm -hmm. per se. Uh, I knew Jerry Lawler ran one end of it, Jerry Jarrett ran the other end of it. So, you know, it's whatever end you were on, I mean, that's who your boss was. So, okay. basically, that's what it was. Well, you, made... Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> you gave me my job, man. That's, that's yeah. all I can say about it. You gave me my job. Uh, first impression to Jerry Lawler? Um, see, Jerry Lawler, um, a lot of guys in the Tennessee area grew up watching Jerry Lawler. And 
I actually didn't know who Jerry Lawler was when I moved to Tennessee. I mean, I knew the name, mm-hmm. but never uh, seen any of his matches, seen any of his work. Uh, first impression of Jerry Lawler was uh, he was the top guy. And um, I guess that was the, the impression I had the whole time. And then uh, as time went on, he proved that he was the top guy. You know, I mean, still today, Jerry Lawler has some of the best timing, uh, the best work in the ring that I've seen, some of the best punches ever. Uh, was was he booking when you first came in? Uh, they they switched bookers. Um, when I, when he when I first came in, I think Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert was booking. Okay. Um, that's what we were talking about a minute ago, man. Yeah. Talking, uh, Hot Stuff Eddie Lawler, man, just his his punches, his everything, just God, it was that Rocky moment, man, with with Lawler. But anyway, yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That special guest over there, Wolfie. <laughs> um. How about uh, memories of being teamed with Robert Fuller? Um, that's where I really learned psychology and so Well, I thought I was learning. Uh, you know, one day it just comes. You know, where your psychology. I mean, it gets better. You never stop learning. But with Robert Fuller, it was a. Uh, it kind of hurt me in some ways, but it helped me in other ways. It helped me where I got to work twenty-five minutes out of a thirty-minute match every night tagging with him. But uh, as far as my interviews, my interviews were. Uh, Hindered because he was the mouthpiece of the team. You know, okay. so. What was he like outside the ring? Um, just like he was. Uh, in, I mean, Robert Fuller. I love Robert Fuller. Uh, he was. Um, he was a carefree, uh, good dude. I mean, he always uh, took care of me. So I really have nothing bad to say about Robert Fuller. I mean, he actually jump started my career. After tagging with him that first time, how soon were you a member of the uh, Stud Stable? Um, about two weeks. Yeah, it's pretty fast. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, uh, Jimmy Golden, we got this boy here, poo poo, he's gonna be our worker, we're gonna be the gimmick. So <laughs> and that's the way it was for about three years, three or four years. Right. Off and on, three or four years, you know. What was the road what was the uh, road schedule like for Memphis? Mm-hmm. Memphis, uh Monday night Memphis, Tuesday night Louisville, Ev- uh, Wednesday night Evansville. Thursday night, a spot show somewhere, uh, sometimes around the Nashville area. Friday night, maybe Little Rock, Jonesboro. Um, Saturday morning, Memphis TV. Saturday night, Nashville. Off Sunday, about 1,800 miles a week. 300 bucks a week, 1,800 miles on the road. Right. Must really love what you did. Yeah. Um, Memories of Dutch Mantel. Um. Mm-hmm. Dutch Mantel. Again, I like Dutch Mantel. I mean, you get you get uh, hot and cold on everybody you ask a question about. Dutch Mantel. Mm-hmm. I've always been I've always been friends with Dutch Mantel. I mean, we've lost touch here and there when I'm in a territory or he's somewhere. And um, but uh, Dutch Mantel uh, helped me a lot when he was in Smoky Mountain. When he's uh, when he was uh, I, I don't know if he's acting commissioner or just like. Uh, uh, booking committee or something. I mean, I know he was an announcer, but uh, he had a lot of input everywhere. Dutch Mantel gave me my first name in USWA, which was uh, Primetime Brian Lee. He gave me my name, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and I uh, can't remember the other guy. I think uh, John Paul. I can't remember John Paul's name. John Paul the tag with um, Rex King and uh, Steve Dahl. You remember John Paul was a pilot? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my memories of Dutch Mantel, but uh, I still talk to Dutch Mantel today, you know, 20, 22 years later. So. Jeff Jarrett, working with him. Mm-hmm. How was it? Jeff Jarrett's a good worker. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you get what you get with Jeff, you know. I mean, Jeff, um, Jeff and I, we have him and I had some falling out. Sometimes uh, my fault, sometimes his. Uh, you probably say the same thing. It was my fault. I say it's his fault. But uh, overall, we had good matches. I thought. I mean, Jeff Jarrett and I. As far as when we got in the ring, we had a good working, working relationship. Right. Yeah. Did he get special treatment being the son of the? Uh... Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know how special you can be treated. I mean, I mean, I think that's a big uh, expectation. Your dad owned the territory. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he had a lot of shit to shoulder at a young age. You know. Um, and, uh, I mean, look how many different type father-son, father owns the company, son becomes something, you know, in the company, mm-hmm. and uh, then falls by the wayside because of bullshit drugs or, you know, not a good businessman. But, I mean, Jeff stayed on top. 
So you got to, you know, you got to marry for that. How, how's it working when you tag tag against uh, him and Matt Bourne? Him and Matt Bourne. Yeah. What, me and Robert Fuller? Yeah. Uh, you talk about in the Renegade and all that out in Dallas? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was good. We had good matches. That's um, an old school show right there, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 80s, late 80s. Late 80s. <coughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how soon did you and you and Undertaker be, get make have friendship? Was it uh, Undertaker and I, Mark? Yes. Yeah. Um, we became friends, and I think um, I think he came to a couple weeks after me in uh, USWA, and uh, I met him in Jackson, Tennessee. Uh, he's six foot eight, driving this little Honda, knuckles hanging out the window on the ground, and uh, we hit it off. <laughs> Then pretty good, and I mean, we remained friends uh, throughout the career. You know, he went to WWF, and I was at Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and then I came in, you know, the rest is history, you know, where I did the fake Undertaker deal, and mm-hmm. I was in the best man at his wedding, and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but like I said, the business, uh, you grow apart in the business, and uh, I don't know if you grow apart or you just get separated so long that, you know, you go different avenues, but... Uh, mm-hmm. I have nothing bad to say about Mark. Uh, how was it like, how was he in, when he worked in Memphis? How was, um, what was he like back then? Because um, he was brand new too. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, just like all of us. I mean, mm-hmm. just hungry. Well, uh, wanted to make something in this business. And, uh, I mean, of course, you see what he's done. Uh, yeah. Uh, he was a uh, six foot eight redheaded dude. Mean Mark Callis, I think his name was. Mean Mark. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, how about working with uh, Rex King and Joey Max? Rex King and Joey Max. Um, Rex King, uh, I mean, any second he could bust a spring. Uh, Rex King was kind of crazy. Uh, Joey Max, I mean, good worker. Uh, just like a lot of guys that have been his tragedy, he passed away, you know. Uh, but uh, I always got along good with the guys. I really never had a beef with too many of the guys. I mean, I got along with just about everybody. Memories of Jeff Gaylord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were just talking about him. Yeah, Jeff Gaylord. My memories of Jeff Gaylord were a uh, great athlete. Uh, I don't know about a great wrestler, but a uh, great athlete. And as a wrestler, he made a great athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it at that? Yeah, that's it. Uh, Bill Dundee. Star Bill Dundee. Mm-hmm. Um, legend. Um, End of his career when I was breaking into business. Um, you can learn a lot from a lot of those guys, uh, you know. Uh, but I think we're young in the business, and uh, when they're legends and they're at the end of their career, it's just like any athlete. You know, you look at them, why are these guys still in it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, as you get older in the business, you see uh, you see uh, what kind of uh, legacy they've left in the business. You know, to hang around that long and stay on top. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, memory of Bill Dundee, um, Jamie Dundee's father. Mm-hmm. I love Jamie. <laughs> Wolfie, you know Jamie, don't you? <laughs> uh, Billy Joe Travis. Billy Joe. Funny. Uh, Billy Joe Travis. Uh, that was funny. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, I know. We were just talking about this today. Uh, Billy Joe Travis was... Um, he was a spirit. I mean, he was a good, he was a good dude. I always... Uh, Got along with Billy. One of the greatest um, people I've ever met in my life. Yeah, I mean, Billy was a kind-hearted dude, uh, yeah, funny, and, but I think uh, just like the clown, you know, you're on the outside, you laugh, but I think he was crying inside. I mean, there's yeah. a lot. Uh, Billy was, uh, he was a uh, um, tormented soul, I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, I loved him. What, if I mean, why would you say that? What uh, reason, well, if you mind um, me asking? Just, uh, I mean, any second Billy could be happy, and then the next minute he could be crying and upset about something. And it was always, uh, it was like Billy always had to struggle to get anything he had, you know. And uh, but I, but I thought Billy, I thought he was one of the, he was one of the best characters in the business. I mean, as far as yeah, I, he could have done anything. That dude was a great worker. He could have done anything. Great Absolutely. Worker. His great timing worker. and his work in the ring was impeccable. I mean, great worker. Great worker. You said earlier that you thought was was Gilbert. You said the, was Gilbert the Booker when you mm-hmm. first came. Um, he was the Booker. What was it like working for Eddie? Uh, Eddie, I, I mean, Eddie always uh, treated me good. Always treated me good. Um, and in the in a territory like Tennessee and uh, Memphis, uh, and he was smart. 
you yeah, you got guys that uh, know what to do and know how to use you, but then you got guys, the powers that be, that are you can only go so far, you know, like mm-hmm. they're gonna pull the strings. So I mean, um, I think Eddie took a lot of heat for stuff that he didn't do, you know, because I mean, but anybody that's booking is gonna take the heat from you know the powers that be. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, they're gonna do what they want to do. And uh, but Eddie always used me real good. Always used me real good, and I think Eddie uh, has an eye for talent. And if you're talented, he'll use you. Or would. Yeah. If he could. Rest his soul, yeah. Mm-hmm. He uh, was smart. Mm-hmm. Was there a lot of politics in Memphis? Oh, well, yeah. I think there's politics everywhere. I mean, you know. I think there's just as much politics in Memphis as there was anywhere else. But what you got to realize is Memphis, uh, they were in the same towns every night. So, I mean, every week they're in the same town, and so uh, the politics were. I don't. I don't know. I don't know really how to. Uh, the people. People say again. Who knows that that Lola kept other top baby faces down because he was because he wanted to be the big dog. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if you would say he kept them down. I would say he uh, he ran through them, but I mean that was keeping him on top. So you know, I mean it was self preservation. I think I don't know. Uh, but anybody who was anybody came through Memphis. Mm-hmm. And Lawler beat them, and Lawler uh, used them to uh, further whatever you want to do. But I mean, all the guys. I, I really don't. I don't. I really don't believe that. You I, don't? I, no, I don't think that. Well, he, when uh, they do an interview with you, you can try to say that. But right now, I'm telling <laughs> you. Right, 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 yeah. that, uh, no, go ahead. So we can't talk. Can't talk. No, go ahead. Well, no, 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 come on, Will. Seriously, come on, Will. I just don't think that uh, that he. Uh, I don't think he held him down. No. No, I don't. I, don't I think, think he, he used. Man. I think he used them just like in a, a movie set. I mean, Clint Eastwood wins it in the fucking cowboy movie. Rambo won. You know. Do you I agree think, with? Huh? You agree? I think <laughs> he was so good, man, that uh, you couldn't get over it, right? Yeah. Okay. Basically. Yeah. Right. And he had the book. Basically. Right. So that's right. And it was his territory. Basically. So it was his baby. <laughs> so he had it all. Right. Basically. But he was good enough to have it all. Exactly. I mean, you can't just uh, own a company and try to be good. And uh, but if you really watch that motherfucker, Bruce he in was the book, so yeah. fucking good. He's man. good. He was so timing, goddamn uh, good. Timing, so uh, good. psychology. Uh, yeah, man. He, he could work with a Bruce. Was awesome. Yeah, he really was. How long were you in Memphis? Um, I was in Memphis full time from the day I started that Saturday morning in 1987 till uh, 91. I didn't miss a show. And uh, then that's when Smoky Mountain wrestling opened up. Ninety one, yeah, right around ninety one. Yeah. Who did you who did you travel with most of the time? And then um, Steve Williams, Stone Cold, um, Taker, Godfather, um, shit, just everybody. Just depending, I travel a lot with Dutch. Uh, Depends on who was on the show and what, I mean, because we were all right there centrally located. I mean, it could be, it could switch up any day, you know, in Nashville. But uh, most of the guys, I, we weren't like Wolfie, like Wolfie and Jamie, you know, they had that little buddy system going. But uh, mm-hmm. we, uh, <laughs> we were men, we traveled whoever we needed to. You know? <laughs> how, how, how often did you travel to Texas? And to work for the USW when they worked over there. Was there, um, was there a lot of times you went over well, there? I heard, yeah, I went over there quite a bit. You know, Sportatorium, you're talking about Dallas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We well, you know, for uh, Fritz. Yeah. Um, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Whenever the shows, I mean, we we ran those shows. I mean, when they were running, we were there. I mean, Robert, Robert Paul and I were a tag team. and um, um, But when I first got to Tennessee, you know, that Renegade stuff, they hadn't merged yet. And, you know, I don't think they unified together yet. And uh, but once they did, I mean, we were there. Whatever. Was, did you ever work Dallas? Or mm-hmm. that was gone that time you got there. Yeah. Did you, Did you ever meet Fritz? Uh, yeah, met Fritz. Any thoughts from him? Oh, uh, businessman. I never really I uh, got too close or got to talk to him too much. But uh, yeah, I mean, there again, hand in hand with Jarrett Lawler, all those guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, he ran a company, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, how about his voice? Did I know any of them? Wait, all, all yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're just about everyone. I, I, now, I didn't work with, uh, what's the, uh, Brian? No, Little Brian. Was it Little Brian? Chris. Chris. The one that died in Japan. Chris, Mike. 
Mike, yeah, I didn't work with Chris. I didn't work with Mike. Okay. But I worked with everybody else from Carrie. I mean, we worked the program with Carrie and Jeff, Robert Fuller and I did. And How Carrie, was that? My name Jeff Jarrett. Good. Good. I mean, um, and that place, the Sportatorium, must have been some place to work. Oh, yeah. That those fans yeah. are nuts. Nuts, and, uh, and I mean, it's legendary, you know. Mm. And, and when you're young in the business like that, you don't really realize what you're stepping into until you, uh, you know, you can pause and look back. Of a career, I think it just comes so fast that uh, you don't have a chance to uh, enjoy it at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any any like real memories with other Van Eric's? Like anything out of the ordinary? Um, Von Eric's. I can remember a lot of crazy finishes. You know, a lot of crazy finishes, especially with Kevin. And uh, what what stood out the most with the Von Eric's for me is it was hard to get a lot of heat on Carrier Kevin because Kevin would blow in the ring just any given second. You know. And, break the heat up with Robert Fuller. Now, Robert used to get upset quite a bit. And uh, because we couldn't get a steady heat on Kerry or Kevin, because it was just so sporadic, you know. I mean, any second, they're starting to make a comeback. And there may be four or five comebacks in a match, you know. Um, what, what made That's you leave? That's fucking cool, man. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking cool. What made you leave USWA for uh, Smoky Mountain? Well, I'll tell you one, money. But at the time, it wasn't really the money. It was um, a chance to uh, better myself in the business. And I, I can say now it was a chance to better myself. But back then, it was uh, just going to a different territory. And it was a promoter telling me. Uh, I remember uh, Cornette came to me one night. Uh, it was the night that Lawler, uh, we worked Lawler. Uh, it was a unified title match. And Lawler beat me, The Undertaker, Godfather, and I think Cactus Jack Stone Cold on one night. And um, won the unified title, which was cool to even work with Lawler like that. But um, uh, Cornette came to me that night in the dressing room and said that uh, WWF has Hulk Hogan, WCW has Sting, and Smoking Mountain Wrestling has Brian Lee, and you're going to be my guy. So, I mean, and that was just, and of course, you know, when you hear that, you're like, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But uh, that's about how it went. So, your initial impression of John Cornette were good? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant mind. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. One of the best. I just think he gets a lot of heat because um, he's a straight shooter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. One of the best minds in the business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And he gets in trouble because he tells it like it is. Um, well, you were, the, you, were the, you were the face of Smoky Mountain then, so you yeah. were the first champion. Mm -hmm. um, you beat Landau, Buddy Landau, Paul Landau, and the Dirty White Boy. Any memories Jerry of that whole Gordon, sequence? Randy Savage. Okay. Uh, you beat all those guys. To, you beat all those guys to, when you won the title. Or <laughs> no, to no, no, but just during the the, the, the reign of the champion. Right. Uh, that night, yeah, it was. I think it was Paul Orndorff. Buddy Landell. Buddy Landell. Tracy Smothers. And D Dirty White Boy too, right? Boy, yeah. That's when you beat them all for the mm -hmm. title. Well, so you can allow it then, and then and the time went on. You beat go, you beat Bam Bam and Sandy Savage. Right. Right. Uh, Terry Gordy. Mm hmm. Uh, the Freebirds came through. I mean, a lot of a lot of names, uh, and you know when you look back on it, you're like, oh, what an honor it was, right. you know, to even work with guys like that. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, working with Savage and Gordy, oh yeah, two different styles too, right? Styles, absolutely. Because yeah. a lot of people say absolutely. that Terry Gordy was probably the, one of the best big men ever. Yes. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. Absolutely. Easy to work with. You're like cakewalk. Right. Yeah. Yep. Take you by the hand and walk you through the ring. Yeah. Um, mem memories of working with Kevin Sullivan. Um, it was you had a Singapore spike in a box. First time I worked, first time I worked with Kevin Sullivan, uh, stiff, got mm -hmm. beat up pretty good. Uh, but once you uh, bring it back to Kevin, and uh, it's a business relationship there. And I mean, the respect goes both ways. I loved working with Kevin after the first time. <laughs> yeah. How was that Singapore spike in a box match? Um, it was what it was. Singapore spike. I mean, I literally. He literally kicked the shit out of me, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, when, and uh, that's, it was more like that back then anyway, you know, mm -hmm. it was, uh, it was more, it was a lot snug back then, and mm -hmm. um, you knew you'd been in a wrestling match, and you knew you'd been in a fight, a lot of times it felt like you were in a fight, mm -hmm. rather than a wrestling match, Kevin Sullivan, uh, but just as much as he could dish it, he could take it. Mm -hmm. How was Sullivan, was crazy, was he still crazy outside the ring, Sullivan, or was he just a normal, uh, I didn't run with Sullivan a lot outside of the ring, but uh, you hear stuff. I mean, right. you hear stuff, you hear rumors about everybody. But uh, 
I would say uh, Kevin could get crazy, but um, outside the ring, I, I mean, he was business with me. Okay. Yeah. Work with Bob Eaton. I'll never forget the first time I worked with Bob Eaton. He shot me, and I gave him a tackle. He blasted through the ropes. Came That's back in the ring, right. told me if I ever hit him that game that hard, he's gonna quit the business. Asked me if I owed him trans. Asked if he owed me trans. I mean, so the first time I worked with Bobby, he made me laugh in the ring. And uh, mm -hmm. after that, best one ever, ever. Yeah, one of the best ever. Absolutely. Tracy's mother's. Another another great worker. Yeah. Tracy's mother's great worker. Loose cannon may go off, tear a dressing room up, <laughs> or, uh, right. flip a rental car over, or like beat the whole <laughs> locker room up. But uh, Tracy's mother's. I mean, I love Tracy. Yeah. Uh, how about working with the Rock and Roll Express with Chris Candida? Uh, um, student teacher. I was a student. Mm -hmm. You just uh, all you need to do is just shut up, listen to those guys. Make them walk into the room. Um, Learned a lot from Ricky Morton over here. Too, a lot mm -hmm. inside and outside the room. How about Candida? Um, different stages of Candida as my partner. Mm -hmm. First coming in, you know, um, very ambitious, I mean, willing to do anything. And then um, once you got into it, I mean, you can see it's professional. He had a good mind for the business. Chris Candido was a great worker. Um, yeah. Some things side, like all of us get sidetracked in the business, you know. But um, as far as an overall worker, I mean, he can hold his own with anybody. How about Tammy? Um, what about Tammy? <laughs> I never, uh, I never uh, had any problems with Tammy. I mean, uh, like again, like again, you're hot and cold on everybody. Mm -hmm. But uh, Tammy and I got along. I mean, we locked her in the trunk a couple times coming from Evansville <laughs> down back to Nashville. But um, that's why she wouldn't shut up. But that's like you know a lot of women. But uh, a couple times in the trunk cured that. <laughs> How about her? You know, her work outside the ring and stuff like that. You know, you being. I always got along with Tammy. Yeah. And she, and she did a good job at ring side and stuff yes. like that. What she absolutely. Uh, what were they like outside the ring? Um, you know, outside the ring, uh, it was. Um, I'll see you tomorrow, and mm -hmm. um, basically that was about it with Candido and them. Uh, Candido and Tammy, uh, you know, because they were a couple. I think Chris was an awesome guy outside the ring. Yeah, I think Chris. Was yeah, yeah, Chris and Tammy. Spot. I mean, I got along with both of them. Yeah. I mean, uh, I love Chris, love Tammy. Um, Chris. Chris got uh, uh, me and Jamie in uh, ECW. Yeah, he got you and Jamie in ECW. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he, cool. he, he well, fucking, I got Chris and Tammy into Smoky Mountain Wrestling. So. He fucking loved us. I don't know yeah. if I got them there, but I mean, I mean, they were. You helped. Yeah, I mean, he uh, loved us, man. Yeah, he loved us. Uh, uh, do you think that Tammy gets a bad rap for sleeping with all the boys? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'd get a bad rep on something like that. I don't know. <laughs> right? Look, I guess. Um, I don't know what it's like to uh, be good looking and have a great body like that inside. So I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, she probably does. Um, Absolutely. I don't have anything bad to say about it. Um, I just wish you the best. Mm -hmm. You know, because, I mean, this business can't suck it out of you. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were. At the peak in Smoky Mountain, did was WWF looking at you? WWF at that time was um, looking at you at that point, or I think they're looking at everybody at the peak in anybody's right. career. Right. You know, um, I never had any. Uh, the way I got hired at WWF was um, Coach Mark and I were close friends, and um, I was in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and Mark was in WWF, and uh, we were talking one day uh, about WWF and about you know the different the different traveling traveling and a different type of money and Mark said to me uh, what would you think about coming to WF and I said I'd love to go to WF and I said uh, so when are you going to get me in WF and he said I didn't know you wanted to go so I mean you know it was like <laughs> how'd you not know when to go you know mm -hmm. what I mean but I mean it was just like that that was the conversation we had and then uh, about three months later that's when I, became, when I started doing the Undertaker gig Undertaker so. give us a uh Run through that whole fake gun thing, how it started, what the whole, you It know. started where Mark called me one day in Nashville. We met at a Long John's or a Long Horn Steakhouse. He said, Vince wants to uh, bring you up and talk to you about coming in and being me. When they first shot it at me, I didn't want to do it. 
Uh, of course, you want to do it, but I didn't want to do it. I mean, there's one Elvis, one Undertaker, you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't want to do anybody else's gimmick. Mm -hmm. And even when I was doing the gimmick, I wasn't really happy about doing his gimmick. But um, it was an opportunity to make good money and uh, to get my name out there bigger in the business. And uh, anytime you can grow in the business, you take the opportunity, I guess. Um, it, 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 it had um, double-edged sword. Double edged sword doing that, you know, because um, I guess it's um, it can be hot and cold. I mean, and you're and being good friends with the top guy in the business can also help you and hurt you, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I deal with. And, and when I say hurt me, I mean hurt me with uh, the business aspect and the other boys, you know, in the business, you mm -hmm. know. So. so, do you think that the whole fake on the tank that was a good angle, I mean, a good thing, a good program? Except that, you know, you didn't care for it, but well, you, you think it would have been handled better, or? Um, well, hindsight 2020. Mm -hmm. I don't know, um, I don't know if it could have been handled better. I think uh, anything could be handled better once you look back and see what changes you can make. But, um, um, yeah, I think so. I think it could have been, uh, could have had more of a future leading into something else instead mm -hmm. of just cutting it off, you know. Because it, it, it ended really fast. Yeah, it ended really fast. And then the fastest it, uh, it ended just as quick as it started. Now, were you were you and the Undertaker okay with that, or did he want to go further? Um, was it, like, was there, was there any point that you guys wanted it to go to, maybe that they did that they didn't? The ending point was this: uh, after uh, you stopped doing the Undertaker deal, the Undertaker deal, uh, what are your interests in the business? And that was the question given to me by Vince McMahon: mm -hmm. What do you want to do in the business after? Undertaker deal, and uh, we kind of pitched the bike deal then, the motorcycle gang, and it, it was just too early for that type faction, they didn't want that gang warfare then, that yeah. came later in 97, 98, you know, but in 94 they didn't want to, they didn't want to touch it. So, so, so they really didn't have any long term plans for that, that, that whole thing then, it was just short lived and that was it. Well, there was different stuff thrown out there, like the Undertakers, uh, the Undertaker's brother, mm -hmm. uh, making us a tag team as the Undertakers. I mean, but you hear a lot of things, but I mean, nothing ever, nothing ever transpired out of it. Um, was there nothing that some slam ninety four? Was there anything that angle was anything special that you remember from that, or nothing? Uh, a lot of hype. That's a lot of hype. I mean, it was everywhere. You know, it was on pizza boxes. Uh, it was on every commercial. Every. I mean, it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And and then what happened after that? Now that you were only a short time, what happened then? It just you uh, moved. after the SummerSlam deal. Yeah, you moved uh, on. Yeah, it just uh, after the SummerSlam deal, it uh, it just went cold. I mean, it was just like uh, it was like it was there on it was there August thirty first, I think it was, and then boom, the next day it was gone. I mean, and then and then what happened then? You went back to. Uh, I went to ECW. Okay. After after the Undertaker deal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's the one I the ECW. Okay. Uh, um, mem memories of teaming with your cousin, the Bruise brother. Ron and Don. Yep. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, I had a lot of good memories. I mean, we but we tagged so many times; it's so hard to put into one just sentence. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There was a lot of memories, a lot of good memories, a lot of uh, funny, a lot of road time. I mean, we were just about every company together from USWA to uh, CWA in uh, Alabama to um, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, ECW, WWF, WWE, I mean, all of it. How tough were they outside the ring? Um, a lot tougher than inside. I mean, and there's two of them. <laughs> So whatever you think is tough is times two. I mean, but they're uh, they're laid back guys. There were some badass boys. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Any any good bad stories bad. about outside the ring? How tough they were? Mm, I've seen them beat up a few bars. Yeah, yeah. There's some bad literally boys. the bars. Everybody in it. Um, yeah. And I was just directing traffic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, so you were it's a bystander. So you weren't helping at all. Yeah. I'll help. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been in a few together. Uh -huh. Um, 
Brian Christopher. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Brian Christopher. Yeah. I mean, what about it? As far as what? <laughs> work, uh, <coughs> what? Larry Lawler's son? Yeah. What kind of person he was? Uh, Jared Funny. Uh -huh. uh, uh, hyper. Mm -hmm. um, I always got along with Brian Christopher, didn't you? Or did you not? Yeah, I, I love you to death. Yeah, I, mean, I love you too. He's a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, 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 he's a loose cannon. He's I mean, retarded. He's retarded. He's second. Like he can bust a spring, you know. But, uh, I love you to death. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Jerry Lawler's son, so that's a lot to live. You know what I mean? Come on. Right. Living in that shadow, right? There it is. Um, Memories of Tommy Rich. Wildfire. Uh, my first memory of Tommy Rich was uh, I was with Sawyer Brown, the country band, Mark Miller, the lead singer of Sawyer Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, he took me and uh, took his bus and Ron and Don, and we went down to Georgia. I think he was. I think he still lives in Georgia. Um, Tommy Rich, and uh, we pulled the bus up in his front yard. First time I ever met him. He was working for NWA, I believe, and uh, Mark Miller asked a favor to uh, try to get me into the business and uh and tommy rich basically uh said he would try to do what he could you know he would try to do what he could for me and uh of course he was busy and i guess he pitched it and uh nobody bid on it then and so i went from instead of going there to georgia or championship wrestling or an nw or whatever it was and uh that's why i went to uswa but, uh, that was my first memory of tommy rich any good ring route stories from memphis um it, well, it is what it is. <laughs> Ring rat story. Um, it was plentiful. <laughs> um, you can stay booked if you wanted to. I mean, there was always, uh, there was always um, girls around Memphis. <laughs> um, Doug Gilbert. Doug Gilbert. I traveled, I traveled a lot with Doug Gilbert. Doug Gilbert and I went to Puerto Rico together a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And um, we traveled a lot in um, Tennessee and the Memphis area. But uh, I think when uh, Doug Gilbert, I think when Hot Stuff died, I think a little bit of Doug died too. I mean, I don't think he wanted to span out and uh, do Absolutely. anything further. You know, he's just a so what, third generation, second generation wrestler. And uh, I mean, great talent. Interview all together, but I think when Hot Stuff died, I remember the day that uh, I was at TV with Doug. The day he got the word that Hot Stuff passed away, and I think a little bit of Doug died that day too. Absolutely, yeah. Because they were that tight. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you wind up at ECW? Um, from WWF, um, I did the Undertaker gig. Um. That came to a close. Um, I talked to Paulie dangerously. Ron and Don were in the ECW. I've mm -hmm. uh, been there for two or three weeks. And uh, went and talked to Paulie dangerously. And uh, how I got my name bulldozer there, he said either this is going to be uh, one of the flops I have or he's going to be my bulldozer. You know, and I mean, it was just like a, a joke, I guess, called between Paulie and Tommy Dreamer. But uh, that's how it started out. And I came out there on a Friday night, and then I worked there full time after that. And what were your initial impressions of ECW? Um, the Renegades, you know, uh, had something to prove to everybody else in the business, to all the other companies. Uh, but a lot of stuff you can only take as face value. You know, mm -hmm. you never know what's underneath. Mm -hmm. What everybody's, you know, whatever all the, you know. Paul Lee preached uh, anti every other company and we're number one. And then, I mean, of course, you see what's going on today. So, you know. What's left? Exactly. Um, meeting Paul for the first time, and what do you think of him? Um, a lawyer, businessman, promoter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, medicine man. <laughs> <laughs> you want to elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, Paul, Paul uh, could sell you, Paul could make you uh, believe in what he was talking about. I mean, he was a good, uh, what would you call that, a good pitch, a good pitch guy, translator, smart. Uh, smart businessman? He sold you the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. 
Any good any good stories about Paul? Anything? Um, oh, we were in a wedding together. We were in Mark's wedding, Taker's wedding. Mm -hmm. Paul, uh, <laughs> any good stories? Um, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Paul? Paul's kind of like Cornette. Yeah. Same, same, smart. same, same, smart. same mold. Just, uh, smart. yeah. Uh, Paul, Paul, he's uh, oh, I mean, bro, I mean, he's a brilliant mind for the business, yeah, and has the gift to gather. Uh, do you like being part of working with Raven in that stable, being the bulldozer? Uh, yeah, it was work, you know, it was work. I mean, I really didn't. Uh, if you think, if you if you're asking if I put a lot into it, I mean, yeah. they had set what they had set, you know, and uh. I think I was just uh, a small part of the puzzle. I mean, I could have been replaced by anybody, I think, in that spot. I mean, I think he's got his, like, his flock. I mean, Raven's the main center of the deal. And, I mean, look at all the guys he's had around him. You know? mm -hmm. uh, so you could take it or leave it, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, this shit was with me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, That's four hours from now. <laughs> no, not four hours. <laughs> Hope not. Right. Uh, well, let's get to Tommy Dreamer. Work, match, you match with Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer. I love working with Tommy. He's a guy. Um, and I like working with Tommy, too, because uh, it was give and take for both of us and input on both sides. And uh, Tommy, even though the spot he had in ECW, I mean, he was willing to do whatever it took to uh, have a good match or draw money. And that's what I liked about Tommy. I love Tommy Dreamer. Even though I haven't seen or spoke to him in a few years, uh, it'd be just like we talked yesterday if I saw him tonight. You know. Any match you have that really stands out? Oh, uh, scaffold match. Mm -hmm. I really didn't stand out as one of our best matches, but uh, mm -hmm. it stood out only because everybody always asks about it. You know, the scaffold match, high incident match. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought the bump off the scaffold would be a lot better, but uh, it's just the way it happened, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I did save Tommy's ass from falling off the scaffold for that night. He slipped and almost fell and ruined the whole match. So. <laughs> and you saved him? Yeah. Ask him. <laughs> I'm asking you. I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah. um, how about you teaming with the Eliminators versus Dreamer and the Gangsters? Uh, how was that match? Well, match is. Match is. Um, I like working with them. I like, uh, as far as... Um, as far as uh, Cronus and uh, Saturn, I mean, Saturn's one of the toughest guys in the business. Cronus one of the best athletes in the business. I mean, I think they got overlooked a lot uh, with the talent they had. Um, and I think it was just the time the, the time it was in the business, you know. Um, but uh, my my thoughts to work with Saturn, Saturn's a badass. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean. We were just uh, talking about that Yeah, earlier. we were talking about, I was talking with Wolfie about it earlier, about how badass Saturn is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, good, good dude. Too. I mean, you get what you get with him. I mean, he, he's a straight shooter. How about the gangsters? Um, the gangsters. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think they had a good gimmick. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, I think they uh, oh, talk man. a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, they stole the PG thirteen gimmick. Did they? Cool. Absolutely. My partner says they stole his gimmick. Well, uh, <laughs> they stole my gimmick. Stole right? PG thirteen gimmick. Uh, Absolutely. I always had. I mean, I never had a problem with uh, New Jack or Mustafa. Uh, either one. I thought I, I thought I had good matches with them, but I mean, today you hear a lot of stuff with New Jack. You know, mm -hmm. back and forth, burying each other, this and that. And, but uh, I never had any problems with them. I mean, that I know of. Mm -hmm. If I had any, I mean, I, I don't know about it. Okay. So your matches, there was never anything? No, never happened. as far as uh, any, any outside heat or... No. No. Um, working with the Bruce Brothers versus the Pitbulls in Dreamer. Um, I don't know if they were the best matches. Um, because you got six different guys in the ring, mm -hmm. and it's uh, six different styles of work. Um, mm -hmm. Um, and in ECW, everybody wanted to be strong and get over and you know, and so I think that hurt a lot. I think that hurt uh, some of the matches because a lot of guys didn't want to sell, a lot of guys didn't, you know, 
<laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, so, yeah, the, so, 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 so the pit bulls didn't want to sell? Uh, I don't know if it was the pit bulls. I just think everybody had to look out for themselves. You know, I mean, and in ECW, you had a free reign to uh, their, your matches weren't uh, choreographed and laid out from A to Z. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you know, you had your own input. So I think when you have uh, a lot of guys putting their own input in, it will take care of yourself. So. Uh, the drug scene, ECW. I think like anywhere else. I mean. No different than any, uh, any other locker room? So, well, some other, some locker rooms are hit better than others, you know. I mean, some, mm-hmm. uh, it's a secret that I was in the drug scene for a while. I mean, you know, wide open, just like uh, a lot of the guys and um, and girls. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some companies uh, hide it better than others, and I think uh, some wrestlers hide it better than right. others. I mean, it's... Part of the business. Part so of the so they, they, they got a bad rap then. Everybody's, you know, yeah, I no, mean, no, no locker room is worse or better than yeah, the next. I just think ECW was just in your face. I mean, they're not going to hide, uh, you know, they just tell it how it was. And um, mm. I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of different, I mean, the different, the companies when they get bigger, I mean, I think mm. they put, you know, they hide stuff a lot better, you know, because they got people that can't, you know. And ECW was uh, trying to, it was a smaller fish big swimming in a big ocean. And uh, I think a lot of times you get ate up like that. And uh, I didn't see any, I didn't see where it was any worse. I mean, I saw where some guys didn't give a shit more than others. And I mean, but that's the style of the company, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. In your face. The, in your face. The style of the company is where we don't give a shit for ECW. So. How about Sandman? Memories of him. <coughs> Sandman? <laughs> Erratic, back ass wild, um, in and outside the ring, in the Waffle House, in the third booth, the same as in the ring or on a scaffold match. I mean, it's Sam man. You know, you get what you get. Same guy all the time. Same guy all the time. It was with me. Yeah. Now you you had, you, you said that the eliminators um they could you think they could have made it in the WWE? Absolutely. Any reason why they did? Uh, I think it was a lot of their choice, a lot of Paul A's. Um, it was just where they were at at the time. You know, I think there's a lot. Of, I mean, how many guys went from ECW and didn't make it? WWE? Mm-hmm. I mean, why not them? Right. Um, I mean, I mean, why not them? Right. I mean, I, I have no idea why not them. Um, mm-hmm. Were they happy? Were they just happy? You think in ECW or? I think so. I think so. I think Cronus was just a free spirit. You know, mm-hmm. I think I, he. It didn't matter where he went. Uh, I think uh, at the right time and the right push and uh, with the talent they had, they could have made it anywhere. You know, absolutely. Um, working with Raven. What about working with him? Yeah, work with him. Um, I don't think there's a lot of input with Raven. I think he has set what he wants done, and uh, I think he had to hear the promoter, which is Paul E. And I think uh, I think you're just along for the ride. You know. And, uh, and a lot of Raven stuff's good, but I think a lot of Raven shit so far uh, on the other e- on the other end that uh, some of the fans don't even know what he's talking about. You know, I mean, so it's hard to relate to what he's. So it can be a little disappointing then work with him because uh, there was really nothing there. Uh, there was nothing there for me too much. Yeah, right. I mean, he'd probably tell you the same thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was nothing there for him or me together. Yeah. How was the outside the ring? Um. Oh, you, did you I, didn't really, I didn't really uh, have a relationship with him outside the ring. But, uh, I mean, we always got along, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. There was never any uh, animosity between us. I mean, Raven was Raven, and I, and, and, and I was me, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, and I was pretty much a straight shooter with him. Uh, mm-hmm. Tell him something sucked or tell him I didn't want to do something or, you know. Wolfie and I had a few run-ins with him. and uh, But, I mean, it all got worked out. If it couldn't get worked out, we'd work it out. You know? Your way. Yeah. Or his way. Probably more your way. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be modest now. <laughs> um, how about working a six man when you was you, Raven, Stevie, and you wrestled uh, Gordy, Dreamer, and the Sandman? Yeah. How was that match? Um, or matches? Was... They were pretty good. Uh, like I say, um, there was three different type workers there. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, on both teams, so uh, to get them all in the ring together is a, is a different contrast. But uh, I think they were pretty good. I mean, uh, there was 
I think everybody brought a different element to that match. And uh, could have been better, but I mean, all match, like I say, all matches could be better. If you, uh, if you get in and dissect each one of them and what you should have done, it could have been. You mentioned before about saving Dreamer on the uh, that high incident match. Oh, yeah, he just slipped off of, uh, we were up on the scaffold and I was ribbing him up there, and you know, because he's scared of heights. Or he was then, or he acted like he was. So I don't <laughs> know if he was or not, but he sure acted like he was scared when he almost fell off, and I saved him and snatched him back up on the scaffold. <laughs> Did you think that he was a little crazy taking all those bumps that set up that? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Now, I don't know about crazy, but uh, a lot of unnecessary uh, risk for that. You know, I mean, one of those can be shown ten times on TV, so you don't have to take them every night, you know? Right. So, right. Unless you want to, Rupi. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um... Memories of working with Bam Bam Gordy in ECW. Um, um, was he hard to work with since he was at, he was kind of burned out at that point, wasn't he? Uh, Bam Bam. Uh, well, I uh, everyone told me that he wasn't what he used to be, mm -hmm. but uh, being that I never worked him back in his prime, what they were talking about, uh, mm -hmm. it was fine with me. I mean, I thought he was a great worker. He uh, held me in a pile driver for uh, like. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he was supposed to. He, he ran down. He picked me up and like held me there for like ever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he would have some glitches weird. there, but I mean, with him, um, I thought we had good matches. Everybody said we did, but I mean, who's gonna tell Gordy that he had a bad match? Right. You know. Right. I don't think anybody. So right. Um, memories of the triple threat with uh, Shane and Chris. Chris Candido. Mm -hmm. Um, I was along for the ride. Um. I just really followed Shane, and uh, I mean, like again, they they had Raven and Shane, and all those guys had their thing worked out with Paul E, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were just pieces of the puzzle, um, which I didn't mind mm -hmm. because uh, I worked in a spot like that. You know, I can do what I need to do, and uh, but again, we had our input. I mean, everybody had their own input, and uh, I mean, you can do what you want to do. What's that? You, no, you just tell me the time, that's all. Oh, what time? How long we got? Four minutes left? <laughs> yes! Oh, that's yeah. take one. Don't get excited. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you get a bowl with Shane? Yeah, absolutely. No, never any problems with him? Never any problems. Except when he pinched uh, the back of my arms during, you know, production. I want to kick his ass, but you know. <laughs> did you? That's just a, uh, he'd always come around and pinch. Did he ever do that to you? Who? Shane? Yeah, never mind. <laughs> um... Memories of working with Terry Funk at House Party 97. Uh, Terry Funk was a beast in the ring. <laughs> um, I like working with Terry. Snug. Uh, a legend, so it was an honor for me to be in the ring. With him. E I mean, easy to work with? Absolutely. I mean, just, I mean you just got to bring it, because he's going to. Mm -hmm. you know, snug. <laughs> uh, memories of... of your tag team with Raven to face Funk when you faced Funk and Dreamer. The memories, what I thought about the match? Yeah. Oh, we had a good match. I mean, um, I mean, in the names, and I speak for myself, you know, I mean, hmm. Terry Funk, I mean, it's an honor to work with him anytime. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a legend, uh, and they're getting Raven and Dreamer. Uh, they were uh, ECW ingrained, so, you know, I just went along for the ride. Um, but I, I loved the brawl too. So I mean, it was it was it was right there for me. I mean, I stepped right in that brawl. So the brawl. Memories of Louis Piccoli. Louis Piccoli, funny. Uh, I had a good time with Louis. Um, I only worked with Louis uh, a few times, but uh, ECW is basically, I think, I don't know if I worked with Louis in uh, USW there or not. Well, I, I'm trying to think if he was in Smoky Mountain at all. I think Louis did come in for a few shots in Smoky Mountain wrestling, mm -hmm. but uh, most of it was ECW. Louis Bagoli, I mean, he was a free spirit. I, I like Louis. Mm -hmm. We had a good time together. Um, but it was just, uh, it was a blur. You know, he came and went so fast. I mean, it was just like. He was here and then he was gone. So you really didn't know him, you really didn't know him that Everybody well. I knew him personally. Uh, I knew him through Chris Candido. I mean, they were buddies. And uh, 
I mean, I, I traveled with him a few times, but not as far as personally knew him. Hmm. You know, I knew whatever was going on with him. I didn't know. Did you ever any? Did you ever have any problems with anybody when you worked with them? Like there was talk that you know, Sandman would sometimes be drunk and stiff people with his cane. Did, you... uh, did I ever have that problem? Yeah. Uh, well, we had a problem in some matches. Uh, Ron and Don told Sandman, do not hit us in the head. We had stitches in our head. And I mean, it was like probably 30 seconds into the match, Sandman hit him in the head with a stick. And, you know, I mean, when you're teamed up, I guess you just go after each other. I mean, but as far as, I mean, I think we ran him out of the ring and ran him to the dressing room or something like that. But it was no big deal. I mean, it was done and over with. And uh, But as far as having any problems with Sandman, I never really had any problems with Sandman. I mean, um, it, 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 he, it is what it is. I mean, you know what you're getting into when you get into it. I mean. So the Harris's were cool once when he did that. They were pissed. And then when they yeah, got to my house. And then he was fine. They tried to kick his ass that night or did or what. I don't even really know mm -hmm. how it went. I mean, I think, uh, I think they threw him under the ring and stomped him a little bit. But, uh, and Raven ran to the back. And uh, Tommy Dreamer and I were working in the ring or something like that. I mean, and then the match, we had the match and it was over, you know. <laughs> so, I think it was 20 minute, minute time limit and we went like five, you know, because of that incident. But mm -hmm. I think the next night we had a match, a good match with him. So, so moved on. Mm -hmm. um, any good stories from ECW from the road? I've been on the road. Anybody really like a good story? Or? Um, man, there's so many stories from ECW and everywhere WWF, WCW. Um, I can't tell you any um, story that hadn't been told. I mean, ECW, let me think. Um, I really can't think of one off the top of my head, ECW. I mean, I just, I can remember, um, ECW dressing was just a lot different than WWF or Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Or, um, I mean, ECW dressing was just in your face. Um, you may see some guys get into it, get in a fight. Uh, and then go out and work 10 minutes later. I mean, that's the way it was in ECW. I mean, I have a good story for that. Uh, it wasn't not really a story, but a statement. Paul, he said to me when uh, I was going to do the high incident match with um, Tommy Dreamer, uh, Tommy's going, I guess Tommy was already out at the ring, and then I was coming to the curtain to go to the ring, and right before I stepped to the curtain, Paul, he said to me, hey, just want to let you know, if anything happens to you in the match, we'll take care of your family. So I knew something. I, I didn't realize the danger, but I started thinking about it then, the scaffold match. Uh, but Tommy Dreamer had been falling from those heights for weeks, and, you know, he chokes him, and he was so shit. I mean, how can I not go out and do it once for him, you know? And you were okay at that? And he, that the fall was fine, or? Oh, uh, yeah, the fall was fine. I thought it could be a lot better. You know, it could have been more like a nasty plunge through mm -hmm. the tables, but it was more like I just dropped and fell. I mean, mm -hmm. but uh, there again, hindsight, mm -hmm. you know, in that. I mean, I think he could uh, polish up a lot of things after mm -hmm. matches. And you, you didn't get hurt, Paul? You were fine? No, it knocked me out. Oh, did, uh, did it knock you out? Yeah, it did knock me out, um, but as far as uh, last, I mean, you know, you didn't get knocked out any time. I mean, right. it was just another fight. Well, your first knockout was your last? No. They didn't get a cherry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had some of your best brawls in ECW. Yeah. Do you like working the brawling style or a normal style or whatever works? Uh, whatever works at the time. Uh, I like both. I like to, uh, I think I like to interact with both at the same time during a match. You know, I like uh, I like the brawling style and uh, I think the people do too. I mean, that's, uh, that's part of it. I think uh, you can get caught up in one style mm -hmm. and then not be able to broaden yourself and you know, work for good, different people, you know. Mm -hmm. But brawling, I do favor that. I do favor the brawling style. Mm -hmm. It just works for you. Yeah. Um, you had an angle with Rick Rude in ECW uh, mm -hmm. when you were under the helmet? Yeah. When, yeah. And can you give us a little background on that? Or uh, the fans that don't know what that is? Maybe, um, a, little, maybe a little story behind that? Or? Yeah, well, what it was is I was just going to uh, come out and uh, I was going to be Rick Rude for it. 10 minutes, and you know, then uh, I think the angle was I was going to kiss Francine. I think I did. I mean, mm. in the mask, kiss Francine, and then uh, I don't, uh, I guess they thought I was supposed, I guess I was supposed to, I can't even remember the angle too well, but I mean, um, I was coming out, Rick Rude, I was going to do Rick Rude's gimmick and uh, kiss Francine, and I guess then turn, and uh, I don't know, do you remember the angle on that? Or? Yeah, you came out with the. Uh 
ratcheting recruit role. Yep. The mask the on. The mask, the briefcase, all that. The, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the mask and on. And then you grabbed her, kissed her. Rude comes in because he had the right, body right. control right. The helmet. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anytime I can work with Rude, I mean, Rude's a legend in the business, you know. I mean, I enjoyed working with those guys. And then after, then you went back to the WWE at that point? In, um, was that, like, 97? 97, yeah. Went back into DOA. Mm -hmm. uh, Crush, uh, Ron and Don Skull and 8 Ball. Mm -hmm. Brian was Crush, and I was changed, and uh, mm -hmm. we did the... Um, Disciples of Apocalypse. Disciples of Apocalypse, yeah. Right. Now, did, did Take It get you guys, get you back in there again that time, or um, did you just fit that? Because that was the gimmick you talked about earlier that you wanted to do, the body Yeah, gimmick. but uh, Taker had a lot of influence. I think Taker, yeah. I mean, uh, Taker did get us back in there. I think Taker pitched the idea, and uh, that's how it transpired into the WWF. I mean, I mean, he pitched the idea, and it just worked out right because they had the Bariquas and uh, Nation of Domination, um, mm -hmm. the Commit Truth Commission, and uh, I guess that was perfect timing for them to have those uh, factions. Like so, gang warfare factions. Or, so that their idea when they brought you back was for that, for the, the DOA? I think so, yeah. That was for yeah, that? Yeah, okay. that was that. Um, meeting Vince for the first time. That you, you, met, you met him the first time? I met Vince in 92 in first? San Antonio, Texas. When, okay. Uh, I, was, uh, I went on the road a couple times with Mark. And uh, I think he was working with Hogan from San Antonio. And uh, just went on the road with him there. Been, met him in a hotel room. Second time I met him was uh, where I uh, met him at his house, where we the pitched the idea about the Undertaker deal, under Faker deal, and uh, Mark and I ate pizza with him and his wife, and I think, Sh I don't know if Shane was there or not, I think Stephanie was, and we ordered some pizza and watched the Faker deal, and they pitched the idea then. Uh, was, was Vince approachable, or just by oh, yeah. By anybody or just certain guys? Uh, I don't know about I, I think a lot of guys are standing off from him. I mean, you know, because it's Vince McMahon. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he was approachable. Okay. Absolutely. Um, did they fly you to Connecticut to meet with Jim Ross before they brought you in on the road? Or did they yeah. just bring you in? On yeah. They flew me in. And uh, I met with Vince also. I went down to uh, the towers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put me in Mark's gear. And... Uh, was pitching some stuff like that for him to see how people reacted with me with the tattoos and the stuff on and then um, yeah absolutely and that and then I worked in the ring probably a few weeks there at the towers uh, trying to mimic Mark's gimmick uh, with Mark there, Pat Patterson, uh, Jim Ross, Bruce Pritchard. Yeah. Um, did you like teaming with Crush and the uh, Bruce Brothers? Yeah. That gimmick? Yeah, I like team with him. Uh, I don't know about 404 or, you know, whatever uh, tag team like that. I like a tag team setting, mm -hmm. but uh, I think you can get lost in a shuffle when there's four guys in each corner, you know. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of stuff has to happen, you know. A lot of dynamics. Mm -hmm. So, so do you like the feud with um, Vega, Perez, and those guys? Mm -hmm. You like that? You get, even, though yeah, it was, even though it was eight on eight, it worked? Yeah, I think it worked good for two because, I mean, how good they were. You know, the Bricos were uh, all excellent workers, second, most of them second, third generation. And, uh, of course, I worked with those guys in Puerto Rico before that angle. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Do you, you like doing the biker gimmick? Yeah. Close to home? Uh, yeah. Um, it fits me. You know, it fits the style. Um, and I don't think, uh, I don't think, uh, I think there's always a spot for a biker, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, even in America, I mean. It's a wrestling mimics, you know, real life. Mm -hmm. um, at No Way Out, you had the match with, uh, with Shamrock, Ahmad Johnson, yeah. the whole crew. Yeah. Uh, remember that match? That, that was, I mean, that was a boatload of guys. Yeah. Chaos. Yeah. I mean, just um, get what you can get. And uh, a lot of action, a lot of uh, different personalities. Mm -hmm. So uh, lucky that it even came off like it did, I guess. Uh, what was Steve Austin like at that time? Mm -hmm. Now you know you knew Steve from the beginning. Yeah, from day one, back in SWA. And how was he? How um, did he change now? That Steve, he's... Steve. I mean, you know, I think uh, a lot of people change around him. I don't know if Steve changed that much. I mean, Steve's always been a good worker. I mean, there's that's the difference. And I mean, he could do an interview.
but he could also work. You know, a lot of guys uh, can do an interview and have charisma, but can't work. I think he had the full deal. Uh, uh, did he change as a person, or was he still, you know, the same he's Steve? Still Steve with me. Yeah. Uh, anybody you talk to is going to have a different opinion on it, but uh, mm. Steve was always Steve with me. I mean, because I knew him from day one, just like Mark, just mm. like uh, Cactus, just like all the guys. I mean, most of us started together in Tennessee back in the late 80s, early 90s. And is Steve also what you see is what you get? That's him? Absolutely. 24-7. 24-7. Um, who did you travel with when you went back? You, you traveled with... Uh, the, the, most the, of the time in WWF? Yeah. Uh, Steve. You traveled Steve? Steve and I traveled together, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark sometimes, Yoko sometimes, but most of all Steve. About 80% of the time, Steve and I traveled together. Okay. I figured you would have yeah, with the, the other guys. Yeah, but, yeah Mark. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the DOA guys, but now they... Yeah, but uh, Ron and Don traveled, with, you know... Together. The twins, they did their gig, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. that's a lot of guys in one car, you know. So, hey, I mean, your, your guys' side, right, don't you? Right. right. Um, any good road stories from the, your time in that company? Um, where Steve and I uh, blew the windows out of the car back under a semi. Uh, we had a rental car where we uh, ran it under a semi, blew the windows out, and drove it to the next town. That was pretty cool. Um, not really, but I mean, it was what it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Stephen and I had some memorable trips. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of stories you can tell about the road. I mean, as far as um, Steve and I, we have, we've closed a, a bunch of bars down together. I remember there was one bar. Where we went in and we, we, we went in a restaurant, I think it was in Maine somewhere, and we went in a restaurant and it was real quiet, but we heard some thumping downstairs in this bar. And so Steve and I asked the waitress uh, what the noise was, and they said it was an after hours club or a nightclub downstairs. And when we opened the door, of course, you know how over Steve was at 316, Stone Cold 316. Everybody in the club, all the bouncers, the DJ, everybody had 316 shirt on and had their head shaved. <laughs> so, I mean, we knew we were going to have a good night, and I think we shut that bar down probably 2 or 3 in the morning, and then uh, everybody went out to eat afterwards, and it was a good time. Appearing at WrestleMania 14 in the Tag Team Battle Royale, mm -hmm. how was that? Well, I would like to have a different spot. You know, I like to have a, a singles match or a tag match, but uh, just to be on a WrestleMania is an honor. You know. Who else did you work with in the WWE when you were there? Anybody, like, you know, not just one match, but mm -hmm. long term. Rock and I were quite a bit when we first started. I mean, when Rock first broke away from the nation of domination and uh, I was in the DOA, we worked each other. I worked Kane a lot, uh, Bob Holly. Um, I worked, uh, I mean, I worked just, uh, I worked a lot of guys. Uh, Road Dog, Billy Gunn. Um, we worked Hunter. I worked on her. Uh, I don't think I had a match with. I think I had a house match with Sean in a tag match in Memphis. Uh, the DOA against uh, the G DX or whatever in uh, the Road Warriors. I mean, we had some good matches with them. Um, but uh, it was any given night we could be working against somebody. That's how a tag team is, you know. I mean, you never know who you're going to work as far as in a house show. I mean, you could they can throw anything together. But uh, we were, I mean, I worked just about everybody, you know, except for the top single guys like Mark and them. But then we even had stuff with Mark, you know, with the DOA intermingle with Mark, where Mark came and choke slammed everybody and, you know, had fights out back and gang warfare. And so. Now, how long were you there this time before you left? Uh, almost two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, what happened with that was uh, Crush wasn't happy. With the deal, uh, the, the way it was going, and I don't think Ron and Don were happy. They weren't happy with the way it was going, and uh, then uh, I was getting most of the work on the road. I mean, you know, out of the most of the dates, I was working single matches. Like again, like I said, with Rock and different guys, and uh, they just disbanded that whole faction deal, and you know, put left Ron and Don at home a lot and Crush. I think he left. Uh, I think he went to ECW. Or, I don't know if he quit or just went to ECW or what. I can't remember how that transpired, but it was where all the factions were breaking up. So. Um, 
Did you have any uh, any knowledge of the uh, Brett Sean the screw job? Mm. Do you have anything that different that somebody might might not have heard already or well corroborate the story or well um that night on the Brett screw job I was uh I can't remember who told me but Ron and Don and myself were asked to watch over and watch out for Sean and Hunter before any of this transpired. And uh we didn't know what it meant. Um, well, when Sean and Hunter came through the curtain, we, as a matter of fact, I didn't see what transpired. But when Sean and uh, Hunter came through the curtain, they were beelined to the dressing room, and um, Sean and Hunter were standing behind me, Ron and Don, in the dressing room. And uh, I told Sean and Hunter to go sit on the bench and just wait right there. And it's, it's no big deal. I mean, if you didn't do anything, you didn't do anything. And then. Brett and them started coming through the road warriors. Everybody started coming to the dressing room. Mark came in with Vince. Mark gave me the office to step out of the room with Ron and Don. And I asked him again, are you sure? And he said, yeah, school will go. And uh, that was the extent of my part of it. There was never anything said, everything done. But uh, we knew something was going down. We just didn't know what. And now, now we do. How did Mark feel about that? Uh, we never really elaborate on it too much. I mean, you know, Mark, uh, Mark's the general in the back. Because you, story, you hear stories that he was not happy. Um, that, I mean, you hear, again, what do I know? But I'm I, don't story. Think, uh, I don't think anybody was happy. Uh, but it is what it is. You know, and then again, uh, how do we know that wasn't a work? You know, the mm -hmm. whole thing. So, <laughs> I mean, you get two different sides. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I say. I never really... Talk too deep into it. Sure. I mean, so you really have no personal feelings on it. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 I mean, you're supposed to be protected in the ring, right? You're supposed to protect your the guy with you, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. So you wonder if yeah, um, there again, it could have been handled better. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and what could have been handled better? I don't know. But mm -hmm. what happened? The result of it, you would see that it could have been handled better. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Somebody knew something. Somebody wasn't telling everybody the whole story. That's mm -hmm. the fact right there. Right. Now, I don't know which, why, which way it went, but that's the fact. Mm -hmm. But you think by them telling them to watch out for Hunter and yeah. Sean, so, that, yeah. that tells the story yeah, a little bit. was talked about way before it happened. Right. So they knew, they knew what they were doing. Absolutely. And putting you guys there, yeah. you're saving somebody's ass. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Uh, now, that never transpired, but uh, wow. the, they were put in place. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any, have any problems with drugs? Uh, yeah. Um, I had, uh, had big problems with drugs. Um, I never did a drug or alcohol until I was 27 years old. Mm -hmm. At all. And uh, I tried it the first time in Puerto Rico on my birthday, 28th birthday. And uh, by the time I was 30, I was pretty much into it, you know, in the coke scene, drinking the pills. And uh, it was in and out of my life, you know. I clean up and then back on it and clean up and back on it and uh, I'm clean today and uh, it was a, it was um, it was a big struggle but it was me it was the one and, you know I'm the one that had to get serious about it I always uh, always got clean because of something else I always got clean because the heat was on me so to get the heat off of me I clean up just enough to get the heat off of me and then uh, go back go back yeah a vicious circle a uh, vicious circle but you. But thank God you're clean now, yeah. so. Clean today, yeah. Okay. Um, on to better things. Debuting in TNA with mm -hmm. Slash at the new church. The guy over here snoring in the bed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we put him to sleep. Yeah. Um, Slash, I think we make a great tag team. I think we make a great tag team. And I don't know if it's uh, because it's that time in our career where uh, we're both more mature and we're both... Uh, or more business, but um, we're we're opposite in the ring. You know, we're opposite. I'm a brawler. He's uh, we're talking about you, yeah. about the tag team. And uh, I just think every everything that was part of it, uh, Jill. And I don't know if it's over yet. You know, I don't know if it's over yet. I think uh, I think we have uh, I think we have some uh, good matches still to come with Slash and Brian Lee. Really? Yeah. How about uh? James Mitchell working with James. Uh, I think he's a uh, he's a, a part of the puzzle. I think he belongs. I think uh, it fits. Um, I 
think the whole evil uh, persona we have, I think it works good because uh, there's just different, different, different characters and different uh, parts of the puzzle that fit with us. Uh, we just gel. I mean, him and I, we really don't have to talk in the ring. I mean, it just, it just gels. Now we've been doing some independent shots, and uh, it just feels like old times. I mean, you know, we didn't know that we were going to do it five years after the fact, six years after the fact, but. Uh, I think maybe we, we may give it a shot. And that, when you, the new church, that was the first time you guys tagged together? Uh, yeah, really? except for a few little things that were And you gelled right away? Yeah, right away. I mean, they put us together and it wasn't even our idea. Uh, Jerry Jarrett put us together. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it gelled right away. And I mean, the proof's in the pudding. I mean, they put the straps on us and we had some great matches with, uh, with uh, James, James Storm and Chris Harris. Harris. I mm -hmm. think some of the best we've had. I think that's some of the best matches we've had in our career. With those two? Yeah, those two. Um, so every match you have with those guys are just good? And every match we had, even the bad ones were good to me. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, we just had great matches. I mean, we just all, we all got along inside and outside the ring, and uh, I think our work complements each other. What was it like working with Jerry Jarrett again? If the, um, after a long time, right? Yeah, after a long time. And uh, the first thing Jerry Jerry said to me was uh, because because of the drugs and me, uh, you know, with the reputation I had of leaving territories and just quitting and not showing up because of the drugs uh, and because of just what I became in the business, um, Jerry Jerry uh, sealed the deal with me when he said, uh, Brian, you haven't lost a step. It's good to see you back. And, you know, that the deal between me and him, and that's basically all that was said between him and I. Mm -hmm. And I was hired the next week, and uh, the rest is history mm -hmm. with that. I mean, I, I, I haven't had any problems working with Jerry or Jeff. Mm -hmm. so. You mentioned you said about how your 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 drug use made you leave promotions and stuff yeah. like that. So that was up until this point. You, when you, the abrupt leaving was yeah, because absolutely. of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I don't think. Uh, they can, I don't think that you can say uh, the drugs made me leave on this day or this day, but when you're in that lifestyle, you made a, the, the reality is distorted. So uh, your, your decisions aren't too well thrown out. You mm -hmm. know? And that was my case. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for anybody else. Mm -hmm. but, uh, in your career, do you think, in your career, if you think back now, was there ever a place where that the drugs screwed up you could have something real, real big? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I, is, I, is there I, one particular I, incident? Um, or one particular, when you were, you know, I'm not saying Mistake Undertaker or uh, Smoky Mountain or whatever it may be, but was there one you said, man, shit, if I wouldn't have done this, I, think, I would I, be this. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't think we can say what we would have been, but mm -hmm. I think the opportunity would have been there a lot more mm -hmm. than uh, it was. And I think it was uh, the period between after The Undertaker and going into the DOA and then what they wanted to do with me when the DOA started splitting up, they wanted to play, I mean... Shane came to me and told me to keep my nose clean. They were going to push me, uh, him. Uh, they were going to push The Rock, Stone Cold, Cactus Jack, and myself. Oh, boy. So, I mean, you can play that way as you want, but that's exactly what Shane took me to the side and said. He said, we know you're a workhorse. Uh, the future's bright. Keep your nose clean, and this is what we have planned. And that's the name she threw out. And you can keep your nose clean. Yeah. You ever kick yourself in the ass? Um, oh, you keep Wolfie in the ass? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like you say, what what would it have been? What mm -hmm. would it have been? But uh, like I say, it's not over. I mean, there's more days behind the cart on me now than there were there in front. But I mean, it is what it is. You know, uh, if you went back and asked me if I had some regrets, absolutely, I've got some regrets. But um, would I change some things? Sure, you would change some things, but you can't. I mean. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta pick up the pieces and move on. I mean, that's what I'm doing today. So you think you have a, a run left in you, with somewhere? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I think I have a run. In you. And the reason why I think I have a run left into me is because I haven't beat my body up for the last five, mm. six years. Mm. You know, I basically took five, six years out mm. of the ring. I never put a set of boots on for six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, uh, I will be 46 this year. And uh, while I was 39, I took the boots off and never laced them back up again until this year, so. So you think if you have another run, it'll be in a tag team with Oh, uh, Maybe, maybe, I hope so, you know. Uh, maybe, um, maybe TNA at Japan, 
but not, not WWE. Uh, I don't know. You never, you never know. know. You never know. Uh, right now, no, I would say no. Right. You know? But but you never know. But TNA or Japan, hey, not yeah. bad. Yeah. Well, getting back to TNA, um, when you have, now you go back, now you see Jeff Jarrett again. Jeff Jarrett now, WCW, WWE. <laughs> He's the big dog. Bells. His dad is the. How people say his ego is blown. Right. Is the ego blown, or is he just trying to still live with in Jeff? the dad's shadow? With yeah, Jeff, yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to live up to the dad. Excuse me, I didn't shout, but up to his up to his dad. Right. Um, I don't know how Jeff and his dad get along. There's a lot of rumors they don't. I mean, there's a lot of rumors they're not getting along. Uh, so people say his ego was very, very big in TNA when, at that point. Yeah. Did you? Um, did you? Now you know Jeff from the beginning. Right. Um, I say uh, I tell you everything changes. I tell you everything changes. You have to change with it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I I don't see where his ego was any different with me than it was uh, then. I mean, uh, because Jeff and Jeff's been business with me, and um, he's professional. He was a professional with me. Now I mean, everybody's gets shot of strawberry vanilla. You got different opinions from everybody, but with me. Uh, and like I say, I haven't talked to Jeff enough to even know. So like I say, I, I haven't spoke to Jeff in five years. Mm. No, but I mean, when you went to TNA, that time well, when you went back, when you went to, you know, when you were with the new church, yeah. did you see him, like, even maybe not with you? Yeah, I, I, think, I think you see the difference. In, um, he was one of the boys when we were around each other, mm-hmm. uh, but he's also office. Okay. And uh, so you got to draw a line there, you know? Okay. And so I think he draws a line well there. I think he's, I think he's a professional, and uh, I mean, the proof's in the pudding. Mm-hmm. Look where he's at. Um, say what you will. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, how about teaming with Ron when you face America's Most Wanted? Teaming with Ron Harris? Yeah. Like a- um, I think we did okay. I mean, Ron, uh, Ron was more office than I mean. You know, Ron's always been him and Jeff are good friends. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think Ron was even. Uh, even then, I don't think Ron was wanting to be, uh, as far as the work in the business, I think he was wanting to be like he was, production manager and uh, behind the scenes. Right. And uh, so, um, like I said, all his irons weren't in one fire to be a worker. I mean, he was wanting to be on the other side of it. So, uh, but Ron and I had, I guess we had good matches. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like I say, I can, just, I can watch every match I've ever been in and, and in hindsight, try to fix something in it, or say it could be different. Which is a good thing. Right. It's critical yourself. Right. It can only make you better. Yep. Um, how about Low King? Working with Low King? More memories of him? Really? Um, uh, Low Key was, uh, you know, when Low, any time I had a match with Low Key, we would do a few spots, but Low Key usually done most of the stuff with Wolfie. Okay. So, uh, our, uh, with Ron, I think well, I think I had a match with Loki with Ron and Don. We had a six man or something, but um, I always had good spots with him. Loki was more technician, and you know his deal was a little different. I mean, they, he was more of the karate type that dude, mm-hmm. wasn't he? And more precise, and I was more of a brawler. So I don't know if we accidentally stayed away from each other or on mm-hmm. purpose. So. Just work, well, and yet he yeah. worked with Wolfie, and you would work the other right. side. I, I guess Elix Skipper is the same thing, then, right? With who? Elix Skipper. Yeah, so same, he, same, same, same scenario. He worked with, yeah. and you worked with the big boy. Right. All right. Um, how about AJ Styles? Um, I mean, did you did you you worked with him a little yeah, bit? I worked with AJ Styles. I worked with AJ Styles a couple times before uh, uh, TNA, and uh, he's a high flyer. AJ Styles, I mean, a good worker. Uh, I just like to say, um, my body size and his training, you know, it's a different clash. Um, mm-hmm. So we work each other differently, and uh, in a tag match, like I say, Wolfie would use a tag a guy like that. Yeah, Wolfie and I joke around where he's the worker and I'm the gimmick. So, <laughs> um, so did you, how about outside the ring, AJ at all? And did you guys not, um, did you not roll together at all? Or? Not much, not much. AJ was, uh, you know, AJ's quite a bit younger than me, and he ran with a crowd uh, a little bit different. Um, and uh, AJ, I wasn't around AJ Styles that much until TNA, and then you know, we really went, you know, we weren't in an angle too much. And when I left, he really started getting the push, you know, with the, um, you know which, uh, I mean, hats off to him. AJ's done fantastic, I mean, you know. Is he still with TNA? Yeah, he's still there. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing a yeah. gimmick now where he hates the company or something. Oh, yeah, okay. So, you know, 
They don't, I guess they don't, they don't well, do it like that. He can hold his own, AJ. I mean, I mean yeah. he can hold his own, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've liked his work. How about Christopher Daniels? Um, what's he doing? That uh, Fallen Angel deal? Is that Chris? Yeah. 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 yeah I, was, I worked with Chris in Smoky Mountain also, too. Uh, RECW? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Somewhere I worked with him. I always got along with Chris real well outside the ring. And mm-hmm. uh, inside the ring, um, I think he's a good worker. I think he get pushed harder than he is. So where is he at now? Is he still TNA? He's, or? Yeah, he's uh he's texting with uh, Frankie Kazarian. See, I, 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 I sound like night or whatever, but like I said, when I took off five years from the business, I really took five years off. I mean, I you don't follow it all. Didn't follow it at all. I couldn't tell you. Uh, I couldn't tell you the angles or whatever. Mm-hmm. when I started watching it again, somewhat is when Hogan came back. So that shows you. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Um, Mike Sanders. Um. Again, is that we go back to the thing where same thing. again where the gap where I was gone and, uh, yeah. and but Mike Sanders the same type worker uh, again, Wolfie. Yep, yep. <laughs> absolutely. Wolfie's getting a lot but of play. We were, yeah, but we were I worked Mike Sanders and we've had good matches and uh, mm-hmm. right, Wolfie. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about working with uh, a young CM Punk in TNA? Yeah, um, how was that? I always thought CM Punk was a good worker, uh, but there again, you, he wasn't a standout because he was one of Raven's flock, right? I mean, you just, mm-hmm. yeah. Raven would call the shots and those guys would be part of the puzzle and then, I mean, we would get together and work the match out, so it was mm-hmm. really nothing standout-ish because uh, Raven was the main center of the deal. Okay. Um, do you like working with Shane Douglas and uh, and Slash and TNA? Yeah. 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 I think Shane, uh, I, I like working with the uh, Shane Douglas at TNA, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, there's different workers from ECW to that, and uh, I just, uh, I've always liked Shane's work. I thought he's always been solid. I think he's going to adapt where he was at. And then, what, now, what happened there? What now? That, that's coming to the end now of your time with TNA. So, hey, so uh, TNA? Yeah, so what happened uh, now? Again, the... Uh, to get a drug deal. The drug, demons again. Yeah, exactly. Dealing with the demons. Um... Uh, I wouldn't say we had the belts, maybe not. I think maybe we already dropped the straps back to the Cowboys, but I just didn't show up one Wednesday. And I lived right there in Nashville, uh, 20 miles from the building, and uh, couldn't make the show. So, you know, it wasn't anybody's fault but mine. And they just fired you? Yeah, uh, I don't know if they, uh, probably, Mm -hmm. but I I wasn't even there to hear that uh, I got fired. Matter of fact, they just contacted me uh, a couple weeks ago. They got a royalty check they've had for a couple of years. I mean, that tells you how far away I was from the business. They didn't have an address on it. So, again, going back to the getting getting the fired. So, is that is that how it just along the path? You know, you would just no show. Yeah. And that'd not, be that. Not every time, but but, uh, but the drugs would. Uh, I would no show even if I was there. You know, the interest wasn't there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just it was a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And, now, do you have a family? If I may ask. Yeah, I have a family. I have yeah. a wife and uh, kids, and um, I have uh, three children that I uh, raised. They're not my biological children, okay. but uh, also eight grandkids. Oh my! So yeah. So how how are they all through that time? Yeah. Now, this, uh, now this is the same life you've been with through this whole twenty five years. Wow. So she stayed with you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, stayed with me and uh, got rid of me a couple times, right. and you know. But came back. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's uh, again. It's just um. I've always loved her. She's loved me, and uh, I've loved the business. And a lot of times that got in the way, mm-hmm. you know. So. Uh, she seen me through a lot of my wrestling habits. Mm-hmm. So. And the kids too, I'm sure, right? Absolutely. Because yeah. you have you having grandkids, you must have a little older kids then. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And uh, um, they're they're hot and cold with the business, but uh, also they uh, are mature enough and smart enough to know that it's uh, my choice. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody made me or forced me or ever held me down and put a drug in my body. You know? And nobody's following in the footsteps. Uh, no. Then no interest. No interest. Because you think because of the demons uh, or? I, I, I don't think it was the demons. I think it's just a, that's the way it is. I mean, you know, they're all athletes. All okay. the kids are athletes, you know, but uh, nobody ever interested in wrestling, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, I think my daughters, I have two daughters and a son, I think my daughters um, with their mom had a sour taste about the business. But mm-hmm. that's what they put together, me and the business, and they knew me before the business. When there was nothing, and then in the entertainment business of wrestling, 
That's when the game was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so now you're at now you're out of TNA. Right. Um, and you go to Tennessee Mountain Wrestling. Is that right? Is that what? It, is, yeah, that, uh, is that what it was called? Uh, it's Tennessee Mountain Wrestling. Uh, uh, that with Terry Landale in Knoxville. Or yeah, and you worked with Dirty White Boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they only ran a couple times a month. You know, it was just an independent deal. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Terry took care of me, made good money there. Uh, I worked a couple shows a month, but there again, it was just uh, it was just keeping my hand in the business a little bit. You know. That's it. That's it. And working with Dirty White Boy, was it the same when you worked with him at Smoky uh, Mountain, or? I think uh, he was a little more out of the business, too, you know, I mean, it wasn't, uh, I don't think the interest was there in either one of us. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you love the business once you're, I mean, once you're in love, you're in mm -hmm. love with it, and, uh, um, but it, as far as uh, dedication and putting time into it like we did, no, mm -hmm. no. And that and that fell by the wayside, you know, like little independents do. And uh, I mean, it's like today I, I just started training. And when I when I talked to Wolfie uh, seven months ago, we talked about this TNA deal. Uh, or not even TNA, just get back together as a tag team. And um, I was three hundred forty-five pounds. Mm. So I mean, forty-four inch waist. I mean, real out of shape. And I started training six months ago, and I'm down to two seventy now. And so. Uh, like uh, a lot healthier, eating right, training right, you know, mm -hmm. getting sleep like Wolf is doing now. God bless him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a rough night. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now, what fight? You said you've been out of business for five years. Mm -hmm. What What was that final? That I'm done. What was it? Um, you know, I think um, I think the demons, and I just uh, it was just too hard to uh, do both of them. You know, it was too hard to stay clean and in the business for me. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just what uh, I associated it with because it got me away from uh, my safe zone. It got me away from where I was uh, okay. And uh, I got back into business and just even just a little touch of it. It wasn't the business. It was me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the demons I had to deal with. And uh, I have a grasp on them today. I mean, I have a program. I uh, uh, have people around me that are clean mm -hmm. and uh, sober, and uh, I try to live that way every day now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so hopefully um, I can come back and um, put 100% into it, because I really don't think I had 100% in the business uh, from the time I was 27 years old. Wow. Yeah. Long time. Yep. Jeez. Um, like you said, so you, and you didn't file a business at all. when You, you were cold turkey. You were right. gone. Nothing. Right. So when you came, now you're back in, you're like, what the hell's going on? Right. I mean, when I turned the TV on at, uh, with WWE, uh, even the name change surprised me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even uh, the, the, the guys that are in WWE. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, there's some guys that are still there that I knew, mm -hmm. but very few. Wow. You know, very few. I mean, uh, and, with, and with the TNA, I mean, all of those guys are there. Just about. I mean, of course, there are some names. Mm -hmm. that filter back through and I know who they are and uh but it's a totally different scene to me it's almost like going to prison and stepping back into life you know you just mm -hmm. take it out of the mainstream besides getting back into the wrestling now for the five years what were you doing with you what were you doing you know for your life for your um life? jobs what during the five years yeah the construction uh, okay on in jobs my dad was dying of cancer and he passed away a few years ago uh, mm -hmm. I went to Florida with him and my mom and uh Try to spend as much time as I could with him, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the time I got clean was uh, when he was passed. So my dad got to see me clean, and uh, okay. matter of fact, almost a couple of years, and uh, so that was a big goal of mine, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, after my dad passed away, um, try to get my mom to move to Tennessee, where I'm at now. She's in Florida still, mm -hmm. and. Uh, like I say, everything that I lost came back fold, I mean, tenfold, my family. Um, and I do some construction work now and uh, some independent shows. And like I say, so I'm trying to train and get back in shape to uh, try to make another run at it. Like independent in Tennessee? Yeah. You did them? Mm-hmm. Is, is, is there a lot of promotions down there? Or? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, fly-by-night independents. So know? really nothing... Nothing that's real solid. I mean, there's a place in Murfreesboro where they run every weekend, and they got some, they got some guys that are some pretty good talent. And uh, but um, 
like I say, if you're going to be a pro, you got to get around the pros. You know, okay. so it's just something to uh, get your feet wet. Yep. And get back and basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, who was the best promoter you ever worked for? Best promoter? Yeah. Uh, I'd say Jim Cornette. Who was the worst? Uh, the worst. Wow. Um, I say uh, Tennessee Mount Wrestling. Uh, what's his name? Terry Landell. And why? Um, just because he thought he was the best, and he wasn't, you know, he thinks he knew, he, he thought he knew everything about the business, and, uh, he pushed Buddy Landell real hard, I mean, you know, that's where he got the name Terry Landell, but I mean, just, uh, it, the promotion, just, um, elementary, I mean, it was just elementary, I mean, it was no, there was no thought process about it at all, and, uh, he just wanted to surround himself with a bunch of the boys and and not uh, put any time into the business. I mean, it was a, it was a joke. If you had one favorite moment, well, if not if you have multiple favorite moments in your yeah. career, you can be if you have multiple, let's let's go with it. But if you have uh, I'd is, say uh, favorite moment mm -hmm. um, for me, young in the business, was to win the uh, title in Memphis, uh, the heavyweight title, mm -hmm. and uh, another one was. Um, Summer Slam to look out and see my family, know my mom and dad, knew that their son uh, achieved something in professional wrestling. And uh, um, I would say uh, one of my other favorite moments was uh, working with Wolfie at TNA. You know, I just felt, I felt at home in that tag and when we won the titles there. Even though it was a smaller promotion, uh, a faction of what you know, a fraction of what everything else was, uh, I just felt part of her. Um, now, now that you're back in again, do you follow wrestling again or not really? Uh, yeah, I, I follow a little bit, but I follow it through Wolfie. I mean, Wolfie's more the main, you know, he's yeah. more the internet and the uh, TV, and he lets me know what's going on. As far as sitting down and watching the TV show, no. So you really can't say what's wrong with the business today then? No. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with the business today than it was even back in the day. I mean, I think it's just time changed, you know. Because they say, you know, they say the ratings are down and... Yep. So, yeah, I, yeah. Well, what does Whoopi say is wrong with the business since he keeps uh, up with it? Well, I'll tell you what Whoopi thinks is wrong with the business, <laughs> and, and, and he tells me this every day. It's just that uh, there's no place for any guys to learn. Mm -hmm. There's no place. Everybody's hot shot it today, you know. Mm -hmm. They bring in guys, they hot shot them, they're here and they're gone. You know, there's no... Uh, there's no farm leads and talent like it used to be, where you bring it up and you, a guy had to um, hone his craft for four or five years before you ever got a shot. Death of the territories. Yep. Worst thing that ever happened to yep. you? Cable. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you can hear a lot. I just, I just think that uh, death of the territory. I, I mean, that's it's perfect. Death of the territories. I mean, there's nowhere for guys to go. There's nowhere for guys to work. I mean. Because indie promotions aren't going to do it. No, no. And you you have guys that want. You may have a guy come in with a million dollars and want to start a promotion. And mm -hmm. you know, you know what he does. He burns through his money and he brings the talent in and they they rake him across the coals and it's gone. I mean, there's a McDonald's and a Burger King. At least used to be with WCW and WWF or WWE, and now there's there's one. There's one. And yeah. when there's one, how can you judge uh, what's good and bad? No competition. So they just do what they want, and that's it. A um, couple things we might have missed that I want I want to go over. Um, when the were you there when the Bruise Brothers uh, wanted to beat up Balls Mahoney? Was backstage ECW? Yeah. Um, was, was that was that even true? Was that you know I don't uh, I was there, but I don't know if it was as big as everybody did it. But I think maybe it was just words, and they were going. What, do you know what what it was about? Even you know I don't even remember. I do not even remember. It had to do something with, uh, of course, of the match or something said, or, mm. you know, the, the, the same old bullshit. I mean, he said, she, she said. I don't know. Uh, I, I can tell you this. They never beat up Balls Mahoney. Okay. So, so uh, I mean, I remember there was some uh, heat there for a minute, but. Oh, the heat was gone. Yeah. 
there was another incident we might discuss. I don't know if it's the same time, but in the, they almost beat up Sandman at the, mm-hmm. the Lulu Temple. That was the uh, incident where that, they hit, that, that, that was, was the, that was the cane where they hit him in the head, where they hit Robin John in the head, uh, and uh, <laughs> I think it was Sandman, Raven, and Tommy Dreamer against me, Ron and Don. I mean, yeah, and they hit Ron first thing, bam, bam, Ron and Don in the head, and I think he hit me with the cane. Mm-hmm. Ron and Don chased him out of the ring, stomped him and kicked him under the ring. Raven ran to the dressing room. And yeah, Tommy Dreamer and I were in the ring working. I mean, so it was basically what. Yeah, that was the same thing. Okay, I was. I was just because yeah. they put Lulu Temple this time, yeah. and I was like, what? what what's yeah, the that difference? was basically it. Yeah. Now I know they kicked. I know they hurt Sandman's leg or something. Ron and Don were jumping up down on his leg because that's all that was sticking out from under the ring. But other than that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh-huh. who do you still talk to? That's in wrestling besides Wolfie. Who do you keep in contact with? Uh, um. Well, uh, Bobby Eaton. Mm-hmm. Uh, Donnie Goodman, which was Bobby Eaton, he worked independent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked to uh, Brian Christopher, mm-hmm. uh, Lawler sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, Jamie Dundee every now and then. Uh, most a lot of guys, Tracy Smothers, mm-hmm. uh, Brian Armstrong, uh, Billy Gunn, uh, Scott Hall every now and then. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else? Now, do you? How about the Harrises? Uh, the Har- what, with the Harris and I, they've been busy, sporadic back and forth, you know, but never, um, not like it was because we're not around each other as much. And the funny thing about it is they live probably 25 miles from me. I live in Murfreesboro. They live in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're in the music business now. Mm-hmm. And uh, like they were before, you know, mm-hmm. um, I don't know what aspect it is, but it has to do with Sawyer Brown and Toby Keith and mm-hmm. guys like that. And... Um, uh, just busy, you know, just busy, uh, a lot, but I say busy, but, uh, a lot of things with the demons with me. I was, was going to go that. The demons with me, yeah. and, uh, I took myself away from it. It was like, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and, uh, I was dealing with my demons, and I went to Florida, and they were here. And so we actually lost touch, just like with the wrestling business, where I didn't, uh, I didn't, intermingle with anything in wrestling mm-hmm. or watch it or whatever and mm-hmm. Ron and Don were part of that. Okay. You know, so so do, you, do you miss that? I mean, cause they, were, they were like oh, your, absolutely. I mean, they were like your boys. Absolutely. I, I mean, the like God, my brothers. Like the Godfather, another one, right? Absolutely. That whole group of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love Ron and Don to the day. I mean, if Ron and Don walked in the room right now, it'd be like we never miss a step. I know okay. that. So, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I believe we are uh, we're soulmates in that type of business. You know? Okay. How about well? How about Taker? Because you know what you you said that you guys were boys. You were best man at his wedding, and again we go back to uh, we go back to uh, the business took him one way, which was uh, I guess uh, I guess it was the right way. You know, he's had some things in his life to go right and wrong, and uh, mm-hmm. with me it was the demons, and it just pulled me away from every aspect of the business. And mm-hmm. uh, when we lost touch. Uh, I wasn't going to call him. He wasn't going to call me. And so I don't know what would transpire today. You know, I've never, I don't have any uh, animosity against Mark at all. I mean, uh, a lot of people say Mark, and I want to clear this up. They say Mark blackballed my career. That's, that's so far from the truth. Mm -hmm. All Mark ever did was help me in my career. I Mm -hmm. mean, when Mark has to make a decision, cut him loose or keep him because of something I've done, it's not his fault. You know what I mean? He just happened to do what he has to do. Mm-hmm. As far as business and friendship, so mm-hmm. uh, I'd say ninety percent of that was my fault. How long have you talked to Mark? Uh, the last time I spoke to Mark was uh, two thousand three. Thirteen years, well, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Any chance of you think of, or you, you know, two, or uh, you both two stubborn bulls and won't reach out? Uh, that too, but uh, both uh, two bulls on different paths. You know, uh, maybe our paths will bring us back together. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But like I say, I don't have anything against Mark. And I, I truly believe Mark doesn't have anything against me. I mean, Mark did what he had to do, and I did what I had to do. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I think once you're friends and once you connect like that, I think there's always a chance that uh, you can connect again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but uh, I'm proud of what he's done. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm truly proud. I mean, and, and, and maybe one day you can be proud of what I've done. Mm-hmm. 
Right? You came full circle, so you hope yep. that, you know. Yep. So do you, do you think about the regrets a lot or not really? No, I don't think I, I don't, I, I, I think about sitting well in that man and each other, you know. Okay. Uh, like I told you before, I have mm -hmm. some regrets. Right. I, mean, I don't know. Some people say I have no regrets. I want to change some things. I changed right. his snoring during this damn interview. Yeah. Um, what can we throw at him? Um, can you get, I wonder if you can hear it on there. Can you <laughs> oh, hear it? I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I hope not. Murphy! <laughs> There you go. There you go. You got that all night. Yeah, I got right. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't dwell on it. I don't dwell on it. I move on. I think there's a better place for me in life now. And mm -hmm. uh, and if that's and if that's wrestling, if that's going to be part of my life, which I'd like it to be. Mm -hmm. And but I can tell you this: if it never transpires again, I'm okay with being today. Okay. Um, now that you you know you're wrestling again with Wolfie, do you a full time career thing you want to get back to or a part time um, career? What are you looking at? Oh well, I. If full time's there, full time's there. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think I do have, I mean, realistically, five mm -hmm. to seven more years of full time in me. Good you. Mean, you know. You got the time away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm healthy, and I mean, I feel good, and uh, uh, the demons are behind me. Uh, not that they can't pop up, but I take my medicine daily, so they don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how long have you been clean? Uh, I've gone on six years. All right. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to be closing up now. Okay. Uh, is there anything that you want to say to wrestling, your fans, anything, uh, or just or people in general? I'll say this. Uh, I think that um, I love the wrestling business. I love the people in it. Um, I love the fans, and uh, I don't think that the fans have seen the best of Brian yet. I think it's yet to come. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right.